How's it going, Jack Tackers, and welcome back to another video for you guys. Today, I'm going to be ranking all of David Ayer's movies from the worst to the best. With the release of his newest film, The Tax Collector, I thought this would be a good time to kind of go over his filmography and kind of give my thoughts on him as a director. So, starting off with number eight. I have Bright. Now, Bright is definitely his worst film, in my opinion. Of course, we're all going to have different opinions on what is his worst film, what is his best film, and all the stuff in between. But Bright just really is not a good movie. This is sort of Onward before Onward came out, and this is just a shittier version of it. It's like if Onward and End of Watch had a baby, but it was awful. <laughs> yeah, that's what this movie is. I mean, I like Will Smith, but even him in this role it's just it wasn't too engaging and this movie has just a dumb silly plot it's boring it's dull it's just not that good of a film in general at number seven i have harsh times now this is kind of surprising that i put harsh times this low on the list because it stars one of my favorite actors christian bale now i love christian bale and he's without a doubt one of the best parts of this movie but the general story here at play isn't too interesting in my opinion i just didn't find myself caring for the characters too much and yeah again it's just super weird because christian bale is one of my favorite actors but his character in this the ending without spoiling anything is pretty emotional i will say and i do enjoy that part of the film the most compared to the rest of the movie but overall it's just kind of a math film that i didn't care too much for at number six i have david ayer's newest film the tax collector i just watched it and uh yeah, I thought it was okay-ish. Going into this movie, I was most excited to see Shia LaBeouf, who is also one of my favorite actors, and his role in this movie is actually really good. However, again, without spoiling anything, he's just severely underutilized in this movie, and while he isn't really the main character, he's more of a supporting character, uh, you know, obviously there are other characters that we're supposed to be paying more attention to, and Shia LaBeouf's character is just kind of sort of on the side but he, again, is one of the best parts of this movie. Uh, but the rest of the characters, similar to Harsh Times, um, I just kind of feel weren't great. But overall, there are some decent moments hidden throughout this movie that make it better than the previous two that I've listed. But let's just move on to number five. That being Sabotage 2014. Sabotage is an interesting movie. It has a pretty great cast. You have Arnold Schwarzenegger as one of the main leads, and it, it is kind of fun. Like, I do have some fun with it, but overall, it's just kind of there, too. Like, there's not a whole lot of interesting stuff to go over, and this isn't, like, one of those rare movies that you'll find that is just, like, you know, a hidden gem. It's just kind of there, really, and that's all I can really say about this movie because... There's not a whole lot going on for it, and it's just, I don't know, meh overall. Uh, again, the cast is pretty solid, which I feel like I should mention now. David Ayer does have a pretty solid cast for most of his movies, um, which I kind of find interesting, even though some of his films aren't that great. Like, even some of his weaker movies, the cast is still pretty decent, and that's, like, kind of the one redeeming quality you can say for, like, most of his movies, or at least that's just my opinion with it, uh, and, and it kind of goes the same for Sabotage. Um, again, there are some exciting moments here, but overall, yeah, there's not a whole lot to talk about. It's just kind of there. Moving on to number four, I have Suicide Squad. That's right, some people might say this is way too high on the list, but I was struggling with this ranking, I'm not gonna lie, and I was like, you know, I'm a sucker for DC, I'm a sucker for comic book movies, even if they're bad. I love comic books, I love superheroes and all that stuff, and this was really like the first time we saw the Suicide Squad on the big screen, and this gave us Margot Robbie, Harley Quinn, and there's some good moments in here, and I'm definitely a full supporter in the air cut movement. Hashtag released air cut, hell yeah boys. But uh, it's definitely got some problems, and I'm well aware of the issues that this movie has. I am not a fan of the Joker. Uh, Jared Leto, like, he's a decent actor, but, you know, him as Joker, at least in this version uh, of the character, it's just... It's not too good, man, and it's really weird, and I don't entirely know what David Ayer was going for, which, again, is why I'm excited if, you know, we do get the Ayer cut, that'll be awesome, but, uh, you know, he's also mentioned that he tried to make it a, a similar tone uh, to The Dark Knight, which, 
what? I, it's just, it's not like that at all. And maybe there was some studio interference there. There probably was. But uh, yeah, there's there's some issues with this movie. It's kind of cringe. It's kind of bleh, with its dialogue. Um, but overall, I do have some fun with it. And I can't deny that, you know, I you know, since I love comic book movies, I do appreciate this movie more than some of the others on the list. But obviously, we still have three more movies to get through. So at number three, I have Fury. Now, Fury is a war film, and I'll be honest, I'm not like too into war films. I've seen some good ones, of course, you know, 1917 probably being one of the most recent ones that I've, uh, well, the, the newest released one that I've seen. Um, but I like 1917, that was pretty good. Uh, and you know, like Dunkirk, directed by Christopher Nolan, that's another good one. Uh, Hacksaw Ridge, uh, that's another decent war film, but. This one's also pretty good, and again, stacked fucking cast. You got Brad Pitt, John Bernthal, which obviously I know him as the Punisher, and Shane from Walking Dead, even. I love John Bernthal, he's a great actor. Uh, and you got, you got Logan Lerman, uh, you got Scott Eastwood even made like a type of appearance in this, which obviously he's the son of the legend himself, Clint Eastwood, and uh, you also got Shia LaBeouf in here. So it's an amazing cast, and again, I, I love gushing about the cast for David Ayer movies because like again from David Ayer's movies I've I've realized that a lot of the actors he chooses in his movies I really like so that is always a plus going into his films but there are some great moments I think the cinematography is some of the best in probably any of his movies to be honest the cinematography is really great there are some great moments in here and uh, yeah, it's a decent war movie and definitely one of his better films. However, yeah, still two more to go through. So at number two, I have End of Watch. End of Watch is pretty interesting in terms of the way it's filmed. It does have decent cinematography, but I would say Fury, as I previously mentioned, has the best cinematography out of any Ayer films. But End of Watch is interesting because it has a really good connection with the characters. And that's really important because I don't think, again, David Ayer's movies has, like, really good connections with its characters uh, and, you know, the bond between the characters and the audience. And I feel like with Michael Pena's character and Jake Gyllenhaal's character in End of Watch, you kind of can see the relationship and their chemistry work and you actually feel for them as characters, which you don't really get that feeling much with some of David's other movies. But, you know, that's just my opinion. Um, but End of Watch also has some fun moments. It's funny at times, it's heartfelt at times, the ending's emotional, but also kind of like, what? Because, again, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but if you've seen the end of End of Watch, uh, something happens and you're like, oh no, it's over, and then, like, at the very end, you're like, wait, that happened? Wait, he's, he's not? Oh, okay. Um, and so it's kind of bittersweet in a way, but, um, it's also very emotional at times, but yeah, this is... Without a doubt, one of David Ayer's best films. But of course, what is number one? Well, it's obvious now because we only have one more movie. But at number one is Street Kings. Ah, uh, yeah, I said it. Street Kings is probably my favorite David Ayer movie. I'll be honest, though. This top four, even including Suicide Squad, I gotta be honest. Because, like, those, those top four movies of his, it was hard to rank because I didn't really entirely know what, like, one was my favorite. But Street Kings... It's pretty fun, and I love Keanu Reeves, again, talking about the cast. You have uh, Chris Evans in this, uh, Forrest Whitaker. Uh, it, it's a, it's another decent cast, and Keanu Reeves I just love. Um, it's just kind of, kind of, this movie kind of reminds me of Dirty Harry, uh, and I don't know if David Ayer really took inspiration from that movie, but Dirty Harry, if you haven't seen it, it is a much better film than Street Kings, and I don't think Street Kings is, like, great, um, but it is good, and I probably would watch this most out of any of David Ayer's movies. I don't know why. Like, Keanu Reeves, just, I, I really enjoyed him in this movie. Uh, some of the action sequences, it's fun. And, yeah, again, it just kind of gave me Dirty Harry vibes, and I like that movie, Dirty Harry. Um, so, yeah, that's my ranking of David Ayer's movies, of course, uh, I'm sure this is going to be a kind of controversial ranking, so let me know your ranking down in the comments below. I'm really interested to see your thoughts on all of his films. And if you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Boop.